Today we're going to do a step-by-step -step guide to configure Hotspot Gateway. So we're going to start off with the most simple scenario where you just have one network, one SSID and one hotspot instance. This basically applies to most of these small hotels where you just have cafes or maybe some F&B places where you have a few APs in that venue, maybe two to three stories. So you just have one small HSG 100L in that location and several other APs broadcasting the SSID and you just want a captive portal. So in front of me, I have a HSG 100 here. I have this ETH0 connecting to internet, ETH1 connecting to switch, which is really connecting to an AP here, broadcasting a single SSID, and ETH2 connecting to my laptop for management. So we're going to follow this guide here. Basically, ETH2 is pre-configured with 10.10.10.1 IP address and giving DHCP IP as well. So once my PC is plugged into that network, I will be getting an IP address address and I can straight away start to manage that box from here. You just enter that default login credentials. The box, when it comes fresh, you already have some basic network settings, which is good enough for you to already go onto the internet, but without that captive portal settings. So for example, on the interface, we already have some IP address configured for ETH1, which is connecting to the LAN and configured with this IP address. And the WAN pole is configured with DHCP, which is expecting to get dynamic IP from the service provider. But if you are given a static IP address, all you have to do is really just to change change that interface address setting. So we're just going to remove that DSCP. And assuming if you're giving a static IP address, so I will just configure a static IP here. And because now I'm not using DHCP, when you are using dynamic IP from the ISP, they will normally push a default gateway to you. So in this case, I'm using static IP, I will have to configure a default gateway. And the default gateway is really just a static route. You can use network setting or default setting. So let's say I'm just going to have that default gateway setting here. And you can show route status here. So I have default routes now set up. An interface IP address also configured for the WAN. And you can also view the details of the interface here, IP address, uh, traffic in and out, and also physical settings and all that. And for ETH1, which is connecting to the LAN port or other connecting to the switch, and is pre-configured with IP address here. So you can change the IP in case you are going to have different networks or different subnets of networks to the users. You can just remove this setting and add with something else here. So in this case, I'm just going to keep that. And it's also pre-configured with DSCP to issue IP address to the users, but without captive portal. In this case, I'm just going to turn on captive portal. Once you turn on the hotspot service on this interface, you automatically remove that DSCP setting because the hotspot service has a built-in engine that release or rather issues DHCP to the hotspot users by itself. So uh, there's basically two different background process to issue DHCP IP address to the users. So once you turn on the hotspot service, then it's basically activated, but it's not really enabled, or rather it's not really running yet, especially you need to assign portal to that interface. So just click on the interface setting here for hotspot and you just enable it and you will need to assign a hotspot portal. So the portal can be local or it can be an external portal. If it is external portal, you just type your external portal URL here. If it is local, you just select your local portal, especially if you have already, let's say, pre-configured several portal here and you will just list on here and for you to choose. In this case, there's no portal pre-configured yet. So I will just create a new portal here and you can just choose the template that basically has different layouts. So i use the first one. And let's say I'm just going to give a name to the portal. And once the portal is created, you select the portal and the reader server is basically pointing to itself. Splash.ransnet.com is resolved to uh, its local loopback IP. Again, if you're using external portal, external radius, you just put the external radius server and with radius key and also type the external portal URL here. So again, I'm using local portal. So I've already created and selected local portal and this one, I'm not going to change that. However, you will probably change some other hotspot settings here. So it's uh, optional settings, for example, 
example, a client bandwidth control, time control, and also DSCP setting. By default, you'll start to issue DSCP IP to the user from the second available IP address. Let's say in this case, we'll be starting from dot two. So now uh, you can optionally set different range and uh, if you want, and also DSCP timeout, and you can also have bandwidth control. You can set bandwidth control here. This is per device bandwidth control, upload or download speed, or you can set it at the reader setting, which we have different topics to talk about this. You can also do bypass or other whitelist certain destination or certain source IP. So those destination or source will not have portal prompted to log in. They will automatically be authorized and get full access. So you can explore those various options here and seamless re-login as well, which means when the client come back within certain period, they don't have to see the portal again, which is very important for hotels and some other options you can explore as well. So in this case, if you want to allow ask them to sign using social media, we have to bypass certain domains so that they can authenticate themselves. This a list of domains that we need to bypass depends on which social media sign you want to enable. Then you just copy each of the domain into the configuration here. So I will not go into the details now. All we have to do is to save. So once you save, basically you have configured the hotspot service, you have really created a new portal and also attached the portal to that interface. And the next is really just to customize the portal and you know some of the colors and pictures. I also sign in options. So let's say I'm just going to have email sign in. So you just turn off what you don't need. They say there are some default sign options, which I don't need. So I just want users to sign using email and so social media account. So you just turn off those things. So the user will sign up here and you capture the email address. There's many sign options. You can explore all this. We have a different video to cover this. You can turn on and off different social media sign-ins here. So now I'm basically ready to test as a user. So I just connect to the SSID and box demo. So once you start to browse, you will be prompted with a login portal. So if you haven't signed up yet, as I guess, you just sign up. The information to enter during sign up is fully customizable. There's a different topic to cover this whole customization. So once you sign up with the correct details, you'll get OTP sent to your email and 10 minutes free access so that you can check your email. And once I click on the activation link, I get full long-term access. So my registration is successful. So that basically you can check the status. That's basically how easy it is to set up Wi-Fi hotspot gateway from that UI interface. And again, the interface settings there, static routes, you can change and add from here some default firewall rules, which you don't really need to change much. Most of the time you'll be really just spending time to customize the portal to fit your marketing needs. We're just going to cover another more complex scenario. Basically you want to have multiple SSID and each SSID will assign to a different VLAN normally you have one default VLAN, which is VLAN 1, to assign IP address to the AP for management purpose. For AP to support multiple VLANs, those AP normally would have a management VLAN and user VLAN. User VLAN is basically attached to each SSID. All we have to do now is basically back to the interface setting. I will just turn off the hotspot service and I'll just enable VLAN or a DSCP service on the ETH1. Now, once you turn on DSCP, you will start this service. You will start to offer IP address to whoever is attached to ETH1 in VLAN 1, so which is basically AP's management VLAN. And now we will just configure VLAN interface, which will be mapped to each SSID on the AP side. So we just create a VLAN, let's say VLAN 10 and enable. In, in our demo scenario, we're going to have VLAN 10 and 20. So we're just going to configure VLAN 10. And now this VLAN 10 is attached to this physical interface of ETH1, which is connected to the switch. And on the switch side, it has to be a trunk port. So the trunk port means you're going to pass multiple VLANs to that switch port. And similarly, the AP will also trunk. And I'm just going to assign IP address, let's say 116, 172.16.1 to VLAN 10. And I'm going to have another VLAN, uh, which is for, let's say VLAN 10 is for member and VLAN 20 is for guest. So I'm just have a different range of IP address because these two are completely separated from a logical perspective, although physically they're in the same network, they'll have no access to each other for the member and guest. So the next is once I have configured interface for VLAN, this is really just to activate hotspot service for each of the VLAN. So now I'm just going to enable hotspot service for VLAN 10. 
again it's activated but it's not enabled yet so i'm just going to enable so similarly now we're going to have different vlan different portal to attach to different vlan so i just create a new portal in this case uh, you can select different portal design depends on your requirements so i'm just probably going to have something different because this is let's say a member a portal so i'm just going to have a member portal uh, vlan 10 so I'm just attaching this to VLAN 10. There's nothing I need to bypass because uh, it's member. So we have member accounts So just enable this. So once you have the portal configured, so it basically comes up with that uh, default look and feel for the member. So I'm just going to separate the member and guest. So I just separate the guest, just leave the member sign options only. So once you're done, you get a member sign page. And again, you can start to customize that portal from here by changing the picture, background, and text. And now we're going to configure VLAN 20. Just use the same method, VLAN 1020 for guest, enable hospital service, or rather activate hospital service for VLAN 20. Enable that and just add a new portal for VLAN 20. So this time you probably choose a different template. So once you have created that portal, then you just click and assign VLAN 20 to the portal to VLAN 20 to your target VLAN and you save, make sure the hospital is enabled here before you save. Then the hospital service will be running and you start to give DHCP and also intercept client requests. If you want to review the whole configuration for hospital, you can go to hospital instance. You can see VLAN 10 and 20, they are attached to different portal. And again, you can change the portal setting and custom my support for VLAN 10 and 20 from here by checking previewing and also by clicking on here to change the cosmetics and also click here to change that sign options the backend settings and just to review the interface setting as well we have that eth0 connecting to internet with a static ip and with a static route as a default gateway as well and eth1 is basically connecting to that LAN port giving dcp to that ap's for management purpose so you can see dcp server is enabled and and VLAN basically for the two SSIDs, VLAN 10 and 20, and we have this hotspot service already enabled and running. So now we are pretty much ready to test. So I have already changed the AP. So we just broadcast into SSID and VLAN 10 and 20. So VLAN 10 is for the member VLAN. So I'm just going to browse something. So you will intercept my connection request, and this is basically the member sign portal. So I just key in a member password, freely create a member account here. So if you go to the hospital sessions, you basically see the user has already signed in here as a demo user, and that's a member. So you can actually type inbox status.net to check that connection status on the user side, or you can click to sign up from here. So now I'm just going to connect to VLAN 20 for the other SSID to test the guest sign SSID. I get different sign options. So let's say I'm just going to sign up with, or rather I've already signed in just now. So I just try reset my password with my email for the guest. So again, you get 10 minutes temporary access. So if you want to check the status, you can actually check the status on the device side. So really I'm just getting 10 minutes free access unless I validate my account during the reset. If I check my status again, refresh the page so I get unlimited long-term access no restriction and if you check the online session I'm fully logged in as well so that's basically how it works for single VLAN configuration or dual VLAN dual SSID dual portal configuration the settings are fully configurable from UI and it's very simple and intuitive most of the time you'll be just spending time to customize the look and feel to meet your marketing needs and there's a lot of other options and in terms of data analytics and dashboard access and reports which are covered in different topics. That's all for this. Thank you very much for watching.